listen, hold on. How, how many people die every year from bad guys jumping out of the shadows? It happens, but it's not a huge number. All right, now let's contrast that number. How many people die every year of heart disease and stroke? Huge. That's the number one killer of humans on planet Earth. What is the biggest preventative measure you can take against heart disease and stroke? Stay fit. <laughs> yes. Exercise. Ex exercise. Yes. Okay. What do you do when you get out there and train in martial arts? You're exercising. That is the best self-defense there is. I hate the self-defense industry because they're pointing their fingers in the wrong direction at the wrong enemy. They're pointing their fingers at the imaginary boogeyman or hiding in the shadows, right? The imaginary ninjas that, are, that will jump out on the streets and punch you in the groin. Most of the time that doesn't happen. The way most people are probably going to die is heart failure or a stroke. Car, car accident. And yeah, car accidents are up there too, man. Cancer, all, all of these things that, that um, they're not glorious, they're not... They're not um, romanticized it's just uh they're boring ways to die if you will if there if there is such a thing as a boring way to die um but the best measures to prevent those things fitness exercise you know these basic basic things we we talked about uh, at the beginning uh, we, we spent a lot of time talking about like man you look so young you look young we're not young we're just fit right are we prime candidates for heart disease? Well, I certainly hope not, not according to statistics. Why? Because we exercise. Uh, why do we exercise? Well, because we're martial artists, right? It's what martial artists do. But um, ultimately, the prime enemy that we're fighting, that we're defending ourselves from, is that heart disease and stroke and other lifestyle-related illnesses by not having that lifestyle that is conducive to those diseases. So, now nothing makes you invincible. The, the end goal isn't live forever because that's impossible. But man, if, if you can have a life like uh, my 80 year old friend that I sparred in Jiangsu province back in the day, if he's still alive today, he would be 92. I don't know if he is, but if you, had, if you can have a life like him, or you can do backflips at the age of 80. Imagine that man's quality of life. Right? Imagine that for a minute. If you had that type of mobility and strength all the days of your life and you never had to worry about, oh man, what if I end up in, in an old folks home attached to a ventilator or something like that? Yeah, man, yeah. That, that's peace of mind. That is real peace of mind. But that man is impressive because the thing is, it's not just the feats that he did, right, in terms of the backflip and the way he was able to fight. I mean, it's just for him to be able to have kept that up all that time, what kind of mindset he must have had, you know? In my opinion, a quality mindset, you know, a very positive and good mindset for his, for his own life because he had, to, he, had to, he had to see life in a way where he had to stay young mentally and open and always learning and always progressing to be able to maintain that skill level well to increase that skill level and to maintain that physicality and and those things that he was able to do with his body so yeah. i think i think a big part of what he did was really impressive in terms of uh like the mental game the mental aspect that had that that drove all his behavior so that he was still able to to get to that point at 80 and do what he did and on another note like in terms of so essentially, the self-defense industry is, is a made-up industry. They're yes. just making up a boogeyman and then trying to sell you a solution. 